out of them. <laughs> we got, I, I, got, I got to give up this habit because if I know Jesus doesn't want that. Can I tell you something? Jesus cares more about you than he does the habit that you're faced with. If you will face, if, if you will just, if, if the people will just learn, if I can just get to Jesus, like the woman with the issue of blood, if I can just get to Jesus, everything else is going to be all right. Because Jesus came to seek and to save the law. He didn't come to seek and to save the perfect. He didn't come to seek and to save that which already had it going on. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was curious, probably like many of us. He wanted to see Jesus, but he didn't feel worthy to encounter Jesus. Let me say that again. He wanted to see Jesus, but he didn't feel worthy to encounter Jesus because he knew when he collected too much tax he knew when he took advantage of somebody he knew that the law was very well known in that area and it was known that you don't do that and so Zacchaeus probably didn't expect to be in a relationship with Jesus but also like Zacchaeus God has prepared for us years before we ever got there. He has prepared a crossroads, an encounter, if you will, to where we could find or be found by Jesus. Verse number five. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Jesus found Zacchaeus up in a tree. A place that Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus, but he certainly didn't expect this. I must stay at your house today. Now the word stay there in the Greek means to abide or to remain with you. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse number 20, Jesus says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. He doesn't want to be just an acquaintance. He wants to be our friend. The Bible says he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. A friend that you can go to at all times. Uh, he is a friend indeed. When, you know, you've got friends, but then you've got friends. Friends that you can trust. Friends that you can count on. Friends that you can tell them anything. And they still love you. He's that kind of friend. And he wanted to be that kind of friend with Zacchaeus. The Bible says in Luke 24, but they urged him strongly, stay with us. The same Greek word there. It is stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with with them. This is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is walking on the road to Emmaus and he encounters believers and, and they begin talking and they don't recognize him as Jesus, but their hearts burn so within them that they wanted this man to stay with them, to abide with them, to remain with them. And so they urged him. And can I tell you something, church? It's the same way today. When we invite Jesus to stay with us, he stays with us. Amen. Uh, you see, Zacchaeus that day became a son of Abraham, a son of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus gives us this promise uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number five. He says, never will I leave you, never Will I forsake you? He says, you can give up everything else. He says, I am not giving up on you. He says, when, when you come to that place to where you're like Zacchaeus, nothing, you're going to see this. Because remember, Zacchaeus is a wealthy man. And we're going to look at this in just a moment. 
He says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. And Zacchaeus, this verse had not even been written yet uh, for Zacchaeus in the New Testament. This is Old Testament stuff. And Zacchaeus is saying, yes, I'll give it all up. I want Jesus more than anything else. And Jesus gives Zacchaeus and gives every one of us the promise. He says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Why? Because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You see, Zacchaeus made room for Jesus. He made room for him. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Another translation says, joyfully. You see, Zacchaeus chose to make room for Jesus, and because of that, joy was his. You can have joy, uh, church, and you, uh, again, I, I want to get ahead of myself, but you can have joy even when everybody else around you doesn't like you. I, I know y'all... You do know that somebody around you doesn't like you, right? <laughs> Did I just bust your bubble? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it, that, that's the reality of life. You don't even have to do anything. <laughs> you, I don't like the way they look. <laughs> I don't like the way they dress. don't like the way they smell. I don't like who they related to. You have, and you don't know. But Zacchaeus said, no matter what, I'm coming down from this place that I am. I just wanted to see him, but now I got an invitation. And I'm going to make room for him. I'm not going to let anything or anybody else stand in the way. I'm making room for Jesus. Mm. He made room, listen, he made room for the most important person in history to, the, to be the most important person in his life. There, there is never in the history of the world of humanity been a more important person than Jesus Christ. And Zacchaeus said, I'm going to make room for that man. He's going to be the most important person in my life. And that's what we do as children of God. Listen, Beverly, I tell you, I'm not number one in her life. Jesus is number one in her life. She, she's told me that more than one time. Jesus is number one in her life. I don't know that I'm number two. I'm somewhere below the grandkids and the dogs. But hey, I'll take it. I'll take any seat I can get with her, okay? Zacchaeus was not afraid for walls to fall. He was not afraid for walls to fall in his life. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Nothing is going to come between Jesus and Zacchaeus. Not money, not possessions, not friends, not power. Nothing was more important to Zacchaeus. Remember the rich young ruler that in the previous chapter, in, in, in chapter 18 of Luke, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and, and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, and Jesus went down, you know, you got to keep the commandments, you know, you got to... All the, and, and finally at the end, Jesus says, you got to let go of everything, sell everything that you got, give it to the poor. Jesus was not intending to leave that man, I promise you. He was not in, intending to leave that man in that condition of broke uh, and, and in poverty. But he, Jesus knew the man's heart. He knew what he trusted in. And that rich young ruler went away, the Bible says, went away sorrowful. Why? Because that, that young man was not willing to let go of everything else and take hold of Jesus. Whereas Zacchaeus said, 
Bubba, it ain't, it's yours. I'm, I'm giving it to God. He said, I'll, I'll give it all up. He was willing to give up what he once held to tightly. He was, once, he was now ready to give it up. Now he's willing to give to others. You know that's real. When, he, when Hey, here's a man. He had it, and he says, I'll give it up. I'll give it to the poor. When, when, when you're holding on tightly to something... And, it, and it's taken first place, you, you might want to be willing to give it up like Zacchaeus. And, and hey, God's going to bless you for it. And, and I ain't preaching about money. I'm just talking about anything, any person, any relationship, anything in our lives that we hold on to tighter than Jesus, it's going to keep us from Jesus. So we need to let go of it. And, and now he's willing to say that what he did, this is a good one, He's willing to say what he did was wrong. And not only that, he's, he's ready to make amends for it. He says, I will. He said, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, he said, I'll pay it back four times the amount. He's willing to say what I did was wrong. You know, that was, that was a thing with me a lot of times. I hated to say I'm sorry. I hated to admit that I was wrong. And, and, and still sometimes I, I have to say, mm, Lord, let's talk about this. Because you know I'm right and you know Miss Beverly's wrong, right? And, and, and I won't get into all that. But sometimes we have to be willing to say that what we did was wrong and we're willing to make amends for it. Zacchaeus was not afraid for walls to come down in his life. Even the wall of what others think about me. It says in verse number 7, it says, All the people saw this and began to mutter, He's gone in. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Of a sinner. Did you see him? Did you see Jesus? Does he know who that guy is? Zacchaeus was not afraid to let the wall come down, listen to me, of what other people think. Sometimes we get caught up in what other people think about us. We become men pleasers, people pleasers. You know what the Bible says? The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Zacchaeus became a son of God that day. Now you see, the thing about it is, he wasn't a son, he probably wasn't a son of Abraham uh, through the ancestral lineage. He became a son of Abraham because just like Abraham, he had faith in God. And that's what makes us children of God. When we put our faith in God, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, just like Zacchaeus, we become children of God of God heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ and so the message today is simply this what is our purpose as a church what is our purpose as a church to seek and to save the lost to seek and to save the lost uh, Sunday mornings we gather in here and I, I love this. I thank God for the worship. It's wonderful. But I have to remember, I have to remember, why am I here? You ever, you ever ask that question? Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? It, my purpose is to worship and serve God, but then why do I stay here? 
my, my purpose, as I understand it in Scripture, and, and you theologians, you can correct me on this after the service if you like, uh, and we can talk about it. But I, I'm here, Jesus says, uh, in one place he says, go and make disciples. In, in another place he says, you shall be my witnesses. And so my purpose, your purpose, our purpose, Pine Grove Church, is to seek and to save that which is lost. Now we can't save them, but we know who can. We can't, we can't, we, we can't drag them in here because if we could, we would, wouldn't we? One preacher said, if I, if I drug them to the altar, God wouldn't have them when I got them there. <laughs> Why? They got to have, listen, they got to be like Zacchaeus. They got to have a willing heart. And so we can, we can help them when they're seeking Jesus, that, that, that's our purpose, to help them to seek Jesus and, and be saved. And then, number two, we can help them make room for Jesus. We can't make room in their lives, but we can encourage them to open the door and let Jesus in. We can talk to them about Jesus. We can encourage them. We can let them know how much Jesus loves them. And we can be that example. Oh, listen, you say, Brother Rick, I'm not a good example. Listen, I've learned this not just in my Christian walk, but in my, when I, when I was in the community of the, the business world and the, the manufacturing world and all, if you'll just treat people with love and respect, man, you, you got so much leverage into their lives. Uh, I, I can remember in all the places that I've worked at since I've, uh, became a Christian, uh, being in a workplace, this non-Christian environment, and yet and still because you live the way that, that God wants you to live, yes, you're not perfect, but you're real. And that's what all God's asking us to do, is just be real. And, and you love people. And, and you respect people. You treat people, we call it the golden rule, you treat people the way you want to be treated. And when you do that, when they know that you're a man or a woman of prayer, I promise you, they'll come to you when they need prayer. And they'll say, look, I ain't living like I'm supposed to, but I, I'm struggling. My family needs help, or this is going on in my life, or I just, this just happened in my life. Would you mind putting me on your prayer list or asking you, your church people to pray for me? It's happened countless times. So we can help them make room for Jesus. Help them to let the walls fall. We can't break down their walls, but we can, listen, not be the enemy who is pointing out their mistakes. Mm. What did the other people say? He went in with a sinner. Did you see that? You know who that sinner was? Ricky. Ricky. Jesus went in to have fellowship with Ricky, and he's a sinner. I don't, I don't want to be in that crowd. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, not even one. And so I can help them let their walls down by not pointing out their sin, their mistake. I can let them know that God is for them and not against them. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer.